Hey man, thanks for coming over and keeping me company. I mean, I love my wife to bits, but I've got to tell you, there are just days where I want to get away from her. Anyway, we didn't have much time to talk about what you brought up today. Are you sure this is what you want to do? Hey Kyle, uh, don't worry. I've always got time to see my best friend. And yeah, I've already thought this one through. I am 100% sure that this is what I want to do. Are you really, though? You do realize that she's a psycho and a control freak, don't you? Taking that into consideration, this is still my decision. Alright man, well, what can I say? You're my best friend at the end of the day. I support whatever decision you make. I hope this all works out for you anyway. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Babe, is it true? Did you do that? Oh, please tell me it's true. I cannot believe what I just saw. Am I in some sort of dream or something? Oh, hey, babe. Uh, what's going on? <laughs> you seem to be in a good mood. I wonder what happened today. Hey, can you not act so stupid? I'm not gonna fall for your little act. I know it was you. You're the one that did that, right? I'm the one that did what? Come on, stop putting me on pins and needles here. Just tell me it's true. Please. You don't know how happy I am. It has to be true. If it's not, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna spend the rest of the day drinking lattes and crying to myself. Well, come on, settle down there, Megan. What is it that you think I've done? Babe, just say yes, please. I wanna hear it. I wanna hear that you're the one that did it. Okay, but I need to know what I did first. I'm not just gonna confirm without knowing that much. I'm not going to sit here and take credit for something that someone else did. You're full of it. You really want me to spit it out, don't you? Well, I'm not going to do that. How about you just look outside the window and look into the sky? You see that big thing there? That big proposal in the sky for everyone to see? Oh, is that what you're talking about? I didn't know that you would get that worked up about it. Yeah, uh, that's just a little something I decided to add into today. Not a big deal. Not a big deal? So you do admit that you're the one that wrote this? I can't believe it! You have no idea how happy I am! This is the best day of my life! Like, how? Why? I've got so many questions. Gosh, I wish you were just here right now so I could talk with you myself! Well, you obviously seem happy by that little skit that I decided to do in the sky. Am I safe to assume that that's a yes on your part then? Oh my god. Babe, could it be any other answer? Of course, it's a yes! Yes, 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 yes! A thousand times over, yes! Well, Megan, let me just give you some good news. You're the one that's giving me my first smile for today. Oh yeah? You're the one that's giving me a smile for a lifetime. I feel like fireworks are shooting all over inside my body. I feel like screaming it out to everyone, telling them that I'm about to get married, telling them I'm going to spend the rest of my life with you. You know what I say to that, Megan? Go absolutely wild. Tell it to them, scream it, shake them with excitement and joy. I want you to fully embrace how you feel. It's the reason why I wrote it in the sky for you in the first place. You're such a lovely guy, Justin. From day one, you've been like this. It's always new surprises with you. I'm so glad that I decided to choose you to be the guy I dated. You don't know how special you make me feel. Well, I can say the same way about you, Megan. You don't know how much I cherish our time together. But I do want to ask, why me? Why not you? You're my girlfriend, aren't you? I know that, but we've only been dating for a couple of months now. Sure, we've known each other for a very long time, but our romantic relationship is still pretty fresh, don't you think? Don't you get the feeling that we should be running towards the finish line at a more slower, more relaxed pace? I don't see the rush to get there. I beg to differ. I think that this is the exact thing that we should be doing. Are you serious? But why? How can you be so confident? 
I'm confident because I thought about this for a long time. This isn't something that I decided to do this morning. I thought about you. I thought about me. I thought about what we could be. The only thing that we can do is swear on oath to each other to be together for the rest of our lives. It's the only way. Oh my god. Babe, do you want to make me tear up? I'm in front of everyone at work. They're going to make fun of me for sure. Cry as much as you want. I want everyone to know how much you feel for me. I want everyone to know that this is the right decision. But what if things change from this point on? Two months isn't enough to get to know each other, right? Come on, Megan. This is a lot longer than two months. You know that. What do you mean? Well, I'll admit we've gotten to know each other quite well ever since we graduated from high school. You have a good point there. I mean, who would have thought that the place where we do our part-time job would be the exact same? That was pretty interesting, wasn't it? I didn't even know that you lived in the same neighborhood as me. Two kids from high school going to the same workplace, but not the same university. It's a pretty rare coincidence. From that point on, you and I got really close. We would tell each other stories and complain about the stuff we had to do in university. We'd also complain about the people that we had to deal with. Oh my god, I know exactly what you're talking about. You had to listen to me talk about my boyfriends, didn't you? You must have hated it. Well, I'm not sure if I hated it, but I still gave you an open ear. You were seeing a lot of guys, weren't you? A lot of bad guys. I mean, I don't even need to go into the type of things they did. You already know about it. I sure do. I sympathized with you throughout the whole thing. Gosh, I really miss those days. We were younger and experiencing so much about the world. You were really a good best friend. I loved having you around. That's great to hear, Megan, because so did I. I loved every moment that we had together. You were the reason that I looked forward to going to that Domino's and working side by side. That's so sweet. Gosh, I told you to stop making me cry. Take a hint already. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to be honest with the way that I feel. Anyway, things took a little bit of a sad turn from that point on, didn't they? Are you talking about when we graduated uni? We were separated for a long time. You went on your own path working through a company that's involved with logistics. And you started working in an accounting firm. The two of us were going in different directions in our lives until that one day. The river. That's right. The river. Who would have thought that we would meet in a place like that? Overlooking the river that runs through the city. Sitting on a bench that's right next to each other. I'll be honest, I thought you were stalking me. Hey, like I said, I was just out on my break. I wasn't feeling hungry that day, so so I decided to go for a walk. Find some place nice where I could get some peace. I was there because my pet parrot had passed away. I was feeling so sad that day. I thought nothing could lift my spirits. That was until you came along. Hey, come on. You're acting like I'm some sort of grand savior or something. I was just there minding my own business. Sure you were. I've got a sixth sense for when guys are checking me out. I could feel you looking over incessantly. I was basically in my pajamas too. Nothing special about me. Why did you keep looking? Well, hey, come on. I had a feeling that was you sitting there. I was so sure that that was the girl that used to work at the same dominoes as me. I'm sure it was. You were just sitting there trying to think of a good way to come chat me up, weren't you? Well, I would be lying if I said that that wasn't true. What's the best way to approach someone that you haven't seen in so long? I still think that you stalked me there. All you had to do was message me and I probably would have hung out with you, you know? You still think that I followed you there that day, don't you? Come on, you gotta believe me. I've got better things to do with my time than that. It was all coincidental. Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe something brought us to that place that day. Gosh, you're such a romantic. You really know how to make the butterflies flutter around in my stomach. From that point on, we started dating, didn't we? We used to go for walks on that river talking about everything. I actually saw you wearing a proper outfit for once. Not just that raggedy, disgusting Domino's outfit. 
I put a lot of effort into being presentable for you. I could tell, and the effort paid off. You were so dashing for every date. You didn't look so bad yourself. There you go again. Come on, a girl likes to be complimented every now and then. I know you thought I was cute. You know, there are times where I say it. Yeah, like once or twice a month. It still counts, doesn't it? Especially when I only say it on days that you truly blow me away. You're such a sweetheart, aren't you? I am just like such an idiot for not dating you earlier. How long have you liked me anyway? Well, that's a very good question, Megan. Probably a lot longer than you think. Oh, really? Was it when you saw me there at that park? A fully matured woman who knows how to pretty herself up? Nope, even further back. Was it when we were working in that little Domino's place? You were catching feelings for your co-worker? <laughs> nope, even further back than that. Wait, what? What are you trying to tell me right now? I've never told you this before, but I've always known that you were the one for me, all the way back in high school. No way! Are you kidding? That's just so funny! I didn't even talk to you! We barely even knew each other! I know, but even still, I can tell that you were different from all the other girls. You were so kind and gentle towards everyone. You weren't part of the popular group, the girls that were mean to everyone. You weren't one of the nerds either. You were kind of in the middle, just minding your own business. Well, it looks like I had a little bit of a stalker on my hands, didn't I? I bet you were staring at me the whole time. Well, hey, didn't you tell me that you have a sixth sense for this type of thing? Maybe you should have realized earlier. Haha, <laughs> yeah, good one. So you've liked me for that long, have you? That's just so sweet. You stuck around this whole time. I sure did. The fact that we keep popping up in each other's lives must mean something. I know that it meant that we were supposed to be together. That's why I'm confident to make the decision that I've done today. You really want to spend the rest of your life with me, don't you? Oh, Justin. I can't believe you waited this long for me. Well, anyway, we both got things to do, don't we? I shouldn't distract you from your work any longer. We've got a lot of things to arrange. We've got to think about the wedding, uh, what we're going to wear, when we're going to have it. Hey, 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 let's slow down a little bit. There's a lot of other things we have to do before we do all that. Oh yeah? Like what? Well, come on. We haven't even met each other's parents yet. That's pretty important, don't you think? I gotta say, Justin, despite you being such a sweetheart and everything, I thought you would do things the traditional way. I thought you were at least going to meet my dad beforehand. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, that's true. The parents are important, aren't they? Well, you know what? I'm free this weekend. So how about I meet your parents then? That sounds like a great idea. I'll introduce you to my dad. Oh, by the way, I should mention I've grown up in a single parent household. Oh, wow. Okay, what does that mean? Your dad raised you all on his own? Yeah, that's right. He's a little bit of a quirky guy, but he's got a good tender heart. He raised this fantastic gal after all. <laughs> I can't wait to introduce you to him. Likewise, my mom knows all about you, but I'm pretty sure that she would want to meet you in the flesh. Oh, wow. Have you been talking about me? Justin, you really do like me, don't you? <laughs> okay, well, look. I'm going to go back to work and tell everyone what's going on. They're all looking at me with this bizarre face. They don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> oh, crap. Someone pointed out what's out there in the sky. I guess I've got to explain myself now. <laughs> okay, Megan, you enjoy yourself. Have a good day at work. Kyle. 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 What are you doing right now? Man, you are not going to believe it. You are not going to believe what she said. What are you doing right now? You got to talk to me. Hold on, hold on. How about you just get your horses in gear? You're overreacting about this. 
You're acting like Santa Claus has come to town or something. Are you kidding me? This is even better. This is the start of the next phase of my life. Honestly, man, you have no idea how happy I am about this. I mean, I knew she was going to say yes, but just to get that 100% confirmation just feels so good. We gotta celebrate or something, man. What are you doing this weekend? Let's go out for a drink. I'll take the drink because I'm an absolute savage, but don't think I'll be in any type of celebratory mood. What's that supposed to mean? Come on, Kyle, don't sit there and try to dampen my mood. This is a good thing that's happened. You're my best friend. You should be supporting me, right? Correct. As your best friend, I'm going to be supporting what's best for you. So, let me be up front. I am not so sure about this girl. I care about you, man. And I don't want you making the wrong decision. What is so wrong about two people caring for each other and getting married? The problem is that I know both of you very well. I know the type of guy you are, and I know the type of girl she is. I know the value that you have and the value that she does. I've got to be honest, your little stunt today was a little bit overboard if you ask me. What are you talking about? The message in the sky? What else would I be talking about? Your horrendous way of driving to work? Yeah, I've got a couple of things to say about that as well. But did you really think that that was necessary to pay all that money to get some guy to do sky riding for you? Well, I have to say, Kyle, for a little ladies man yourself, I thought that you would have approved of that. I'll have you know that she had a very good reaction to it. I made her cry at work, Kyle, in front of her co-workers. Can you believe that she was crying tears of joy in front of them? Aw, oh, you don't have to tell me, man. I can believe it. I remember those tears very well sliding down that ugly, greasy face of hers. Hey, Kyle, you just need to cut it out. This is my girl that we're talking about. Is that what you're calling that thing? You still haven't realized it yet, have you? I haven't realized what? That thing that you're talking to and have decided to marry is a succubus, man. What did you say? Yeah, dude, don't fall for that little stunt of hers. On the outside, she's okay. Big chest, but that's about it. But she is pure evil on the inside. She is a mega B with a capital on the B. Hold on a second. What the hell, Kyle? Where do you get off calling my partner something like that? What? A letter of the alphabet? Is that what you're going to get angry at me for? Come on, bro. You remember the old rhymes that they used to say? A is for apple. B is for bestie. Enough screwing around, Kyle. I know exactly what you were trying to call her. That is so out of place. You can have your own thoughts about her, but keep them to yourself. I am not going to let you sit there and insult her. She is a great girl, even if you don't see that. What are you talking about? Great girl? If she was a great girl, I would have been approving of that sign in the sky. You're giving her way too much credit. She doesn't deserve all of this. I mean, just think about it. What has she done for you? Is that what this is all about, Kyle? Is it all about just a fair exchange of goods or something? It doesn't matter what she's done for me. We're in a relationship and we care about each other. That's the main thing at the end of the day, isn't it? Well, no, not exactly. I don't care how much you care about her. You're going to start losing your feelings for her the moment she has trouble controlling that inner bee of hers. What makes you think that she's such a terrible girl then? Tell me that much. Like, I get it, you guys dated when you were in high school. Fine, but was it really that bad? Bro, I'm telling you, I have no idea what you were jealous about. Recently, you told me that you secretly wanted to date her, even though I was the one that was with her. I kind of wish you just told me it back then. I would have given her to you in a heartbeat. Okay, uh, was she really that bad though? Hey dude, come on, you know me. You know the type of history I've had. I have been around the block. I've tasted the 31 ice creams of Baskin Robbins and more if you catch my drift. I've had my fair share of crazy, and I've got to be honest, some of them were kind of enjoyable. Your girl is top of my list. Absolute demon that one is. Well, in what way? Was she that bad? Oh, come on, man. If you really care about me, you should tell me. 
We're about to get married after all. I think I've told you enough about her. What you need to do is listen. Okay, so what? What you've told me so far is that she was a little bit clingy. You had to message her every hour of the day or else she would have gotten mad. I don't know about you, but that sounds like typical girl syndrome to me. It's not that bad. I mean, all you have to do is send the message, right? She doesn't really care about the content that much. You really want me to just spit it all out, don't you? Trust me, after you hear everything, you're not gonna like your girl. Well, hey, how about you just try me? I might surprise you. Yeah, you really would. You really would surprise me if you're stupid enough to stay with her after I tell you my stories. Anyway, where do I even start? Well, uh, what was the first thing that got on your nerves when you were dating her? The first thing? Huh, so it's been a while, so I'm gonna have to think about that one. This is not so much a pet peeve, but just a serious red flag. Every time I met her, she would kind of pat me down. She would pat you down? Uh, what do you mean by that? She thinks that you bought illicit goods to the date or something? No, uh, nothing like that. I mean, that's what I thought at first. We'd meet up at a destination, and she would take her attention away from her phone. She wouldn't even respond back to me, not even a hello. First, she would look me down head to toe, checking out everything. For the first date, I passed. Can't say the same for the rest, though. Hang on a minute. You passed what? Was it some sort of test? This was the test of whether or not she liked the clothes that I was wearing that day. She was testing you for something like that? Yeah, man, isn't that totally bizarre? Who does that? I gotta be honest, she doesn't look particularly good herself. I don't think she's in the right to judge what I'm wearing. So anyway, here's what the usual gig is. We arrange for a place to meet up, and she'll sit there in a pretty silky mood. At first, I thought it was because I was late or something, but I always arrived early. If we had plans for 5 o'clock, I would get there at like 4.50. She would still be there, doing that sulky little face of hers. Okay, well, maybe she wants you to come early. It's clear you made her wait. You don't think that I was thinking about that? I began getting into the rhythm of it. First, I would come 10 minutes earlier, and then I would come 20 minutes earlier. I'd even come 30 minutes earlier. Heck, you know what? I started coming an hour earlier. And guess what? She was always there. She always arrived there before me. Isn't that just so weird? Well, I guess everyone has their quirks, don't they? Maybe she wanted to do some things before you arrived. Justin, listen. I love you, but for once you just gotta listen to me when I say that this is crazy. It's crazy! She wasn't doing anything. She was just sitting there on her phone, tapping away, looking busy, and looking extra peed off. Come to think of it, she's always early to my date as well. I've never really considered it as an issue, though. It may not be an issue, but you gotta admit, it's kind of weird, right? I mean, a full hour? Just how early do I need to come? I was tempted to just go to the destination before I made the arrangement. I think that she would still be there waiting for me. That's a little bit of a stretch. Anyway, so after that, she did some sort of test on you. Oh yeah, that's right, the test. This girl, man, she's a different breed. I'll tell you that much. So on the first date, she gave me a look down and checked out what I was wearing. That annoyed, sulky face quickly turned into a bright one. And she put on that cutesy little voice of hers, ready to go on the date. Okay, well, this is sounding good. Yeah, but listen, man, that's on the first date. Most of the dates after that were an absolute joke. How, do you say? Well, let's take the second date, for example. I did the exact same thing. I arrived, and there she was sitting on that phone mesmerized by it. I walked straight up to her, waiting for her to realize I was there. Even with me standing right there in front of her, it was almost like I was a ghost. I didn't exist. The moment I tapped her on the shoulder, she gave me her attention. She wasn't even surprised that I was there. Once again, she looked me up and down. 
There was no hello, there was no I missed you. There was no I'm really excited for today. All she did was just stand there and judge me. Okay, and so what happened this time? Well, this time she barely looked me in the eye and she said that the shoes don't match the entire outfit. She turned the other cheek and walked away. That was our second date. 20 seconds into it and it was basically over. What the? That doesn't sound like her at all. You're starting to see where I'm coming from, aren't you? Even you must realize that this is hella crazy. And Justin, man, you gotta listen to me. This wasn't the first time it happened. This happened for pretty much all the dates from that point on. It would be the shoes, or it would be the shirt. Maybe it was the haircut. If there is one thing about my appearance that really dissatisfied her, she'd criticize me for it and just walk away, go home. Isn't this bizarre? Isn't it just the weirdest thing you've ever heard? It is really bizarre. It is really weird, and I have to be honest. I'm not going to believe a silly story like this. You're actually telling me that this happened? Aw, oh, come on, Kyle. You're gonna have to come up with something better than that. Are you serious right now, man? You're telling me that you don't believe me? You think I'm lying or something? Well, who does that? That's just the weirdest thing in the world. I mean, you guys are dating, right? It doesn't make sense that she would just walk away like that. I mean, hey, she doesn't do that type of thing to me. Well, look, between the two of us, you're the one that puts more effort into these types of things, don't you? I mean, say what you will about that stubborn head of yours, but you've got good taste. That's something that chicks would go for. This whole act with the phone is something that she has never done with me. I can hardly think that this story is true. I mean, didn't you try and do something about it? Don't tell me you just walked home and just treated it like nothing happened. Of course I didn't. I don't know if you realize this, man, but I'm actually like a normal human being. I've got normal emotions and actions, unlike that little demon of yours. So what did you do then? Did you chase after her? Did you send her a message? Did you talk about it at school or something? Come on, man, of course I've done all of that. What happens when I chase after her? She gets in a cab and she flies away. I send her a message and she ignores me. I talk to her at school and it's like nothing happened. We're just having a normal conversation like we're a happy-go-lucky couple. You're not going to believe this one either. I was getting really annoyed with her just ditching me like that time after time. I tried so many different outfits to please her. One time I thought I would get the best of her. I would wear the first outfit that I wore on our first date. This is something I know that she said yes to. So, I come to her grinning like a little kid on Halloween, asking for trick-or-treat. I thought I won her over. I was so cocky. I got her attention like I always do, and she averted her eyes away from the phone. She did her usual gig, looked me up and down. She paused for a moment. I think she was realizing what I did. She gave me a meh, and she did the same thing. Walked off as she always does. Isn't this crazy? Isn't this, like, unbelievable? If that's not enough to make you want to ditch this girl, I don't know what is. It's a cute little story. It's giving me a little bit of a chuckle. I'm not sure if it's true, but if it is, it's kind of funny just to see that you were standing there on your own. What the hell, man? I am meant to be your best friend. You're seriously going to make fun of me for this? Well, you have to admit the scene is quite comical. Anyway, it doesn't matter because the story isn't true, is it? Man, I swear in my daughter's little life that this story is true. I know you don't want to, but you have to believe me. Anyway, is that all you've got for me? It's definitely weird, but I don't know if it's that crazy type that I'd classify under. Well, hey man, look, like I said, that was just kind of a red flag. The weirdness just continued to pop up from that point. We'd be watching movies together, uh, particularly horror ones. You're meant to be on your feet and absolutely terrified of what you're looking at, right? Well, I hope so. That's what horror movies are for, aren't they? Well, good. I'm glad someone else agrees with me because it wasn't the same when I was sitting there with her. We'd be there watching the movie Cold on a Winter Night, mist gathering outside the house. We'd be underneath a blanket. 
I'd be clenching it in fear, almost afraid. If I got one little jump scare, I might just rip the blanket in two. That's how hard I was gripping it. The scene starts to get suspenseful. You know something's about to happen, but you don't know when. You are gonna be in for some gory moment. It's gonna make your stomach turn. It's gonna creep the hell out of you. Finally, the scene comes around. And what do you think your girl does? I'm not sure. You said she was weird, right? Maybe the scene was so overpowering that she actually started crying? No way, man. This was a different level of weird. Get this. She started laughing. I'm sorry, what did you say? That's right. The chick was laughing. And this was no creepy, evil laugh like they would do in the movie. She would laugh as if we were watching a funny comedy. Tears coming out of her eyes, smacking me on the leg like we just saw the funniest scene in a movie. I was more horrified at her than the actual movie. Okay, well, maybe there's some little funny twist to it, right? She probably saw something that you didn't. What are you on about right now? Justin, this is a horror movie. Do you know how horror movies work? Have you ever seen one? These are the type of movies where people get their intestines eaten out by rats and stuff. In a movie I saw recently, a chick had to chop her leg off and pick at her own bone marrow. I'm sorry, what? Look, that's what horror is, don't judge me. Are you going to sit there and tell me with a straight face that you wouldn't find it weird if someone laughed at all of that? Again, I don't know what you want me to say, Kyle. It just sounds like another weird, crazy story of yours. I don't know if I can believe it. Oh, come on, man. Why would I lie about this? You know there's a part of you that believes this. You know it. The weird, dark, crazy stuff doesn't stop there. She played with Ouija boards, had nights where she slept with her eyes open. When she gets to the shower, instead of singing like most people, she just starts chanting some weird incarnation. It felt like I was about to be offered up to some screwed up satanic lord or something. That just doesn't sound like her at all. I mean, come on, look at her. Look at her personality. Look at the way that she talks to people. Do you really think that she's the type of girl to do the things that you're saying? Honestly, man, don't fall for it. You think I wasn't thinking the same thing back then? I don't know what it is. Maybe she's fronting it or she just has some weird dark side to her, some split personality. But man, I'm telling you, there's a little beast inside of that one. You better be on your guard. Better yet, you should just cancel the wedding as soon as you can. I don't know, Kyle. This all just sounds a little too far-fetched for my liking. I mean, let's assume that everything is true. That was when she was in high school, right? You got to admit that we were all kind of weird back then. Like, just think about it. Crazy Frog was going popular back then, and we actually liked that. We thought it was catchy. Looking back in retrospect, it was pretty cringy, wasn't it? You can't really compare the level of weirdness in liking Crazy Frog and laughing at a horror movie. They're just on two different planes. Well, okay, come on, but you get my point. We did weird things. Like, hey, I remember when there was a period where you were getting really into those cartoon girls. What did you say? I don't know what you're talking about right now. Oh, come on. We both know that you like them. That phase only lasted a month, but people don't forget. Are you kidding me right now? Me liking some sort of cartoon? You know how much of a ladies' man I am. I don't need to get off from watching that type of stuff. Yeah, well, you could have fooled me. But look, so far I've only talked about just how insane she is. You need to hear about this selfish side of her. At the end of the day, she is a girl. She is going to be selfish to some extent. I'm not really surprised about that. Oh yeah, but I'm talking about selfish on a different level. Do you remember that little job I had serving and washing dishes in that restaurant? Yeah, you used to like working there, didn't you? Paid pretty good for a guy your age. Ah, oh, it was the best. Before I dated her, that is. I absolutely loved going there. Yeah, why not? Things started to change. Okay, well, in what way? Well, we're still trying to get to know each other, and she found out that I have a job. The moment that she did, she asked me for how much I get paid a week. I gave her a number, and she seemed pretty impressed by it. Well, there you go. 
That's good to hear for your side. Financially, she accepted you. Yeah, but do you know what she did with that knowledge? Any of the times that we actually were able to have a date, she would make me buy everything. I'd buy her food, I'd buy her shoes, I'd even buy her the most stupid things. The amount always equals the exact amount I earned for that week. I don't know. It sounds like a lot of girls when you start dating them. They bleed you dry. Yeah, but Justin, listen to me right now. She made me buy a kebab skewer stand. Can I repeat that? A kebab skewer stand. Okay, you're talking about something that should be used for barbecue. That's not weird. Maybe she's a food addict. No, you're not listening to me. I'm not talking about some things that you use for parties or something. This thing was massive. She was slicing pork off of it. It looked like she was going to open up her own store. You're talking about that big vertical one that they have, right? I mean, that's pretty cool if she learned how to use it. Do you think she actually used that thing for food? Take three guesses. What do you think she used it for? I'm not really sure, to be honest. What else could you use it for? She wanted to have it as a decoration in her room. She said that she likes seeing that thing spin around. That's where my hard-earned money went to. Um, okay then. Not only that, but she felt like I owed her everything. You owed her everything? You're not going to believe this, man. I'd be asleep, preparing myself for the next day. I'd faintly wake up to the sound of my phone vibrating. It was her, but I ignored her the whole time. I mean, the times that she was calling me were like at 3 in the morning. Okay, so why would she be calling you at that time? Well, get this, man. She was lonely. She was calling me to get my attention. Are you serious right now? Oh yeah, dead serious. She was so desperate for me to give her attention that she would actually come to my house and was tapping on my window. Just imagine that for me, will you? There I am, peacefully sleeping. I hear a tapping at the window, and it's your truly beloved Megan frothing at the mouth with anger. Well, uh, this is sounding really heavy. Oh yeah? It's a big deal, isn't it? And then there's the dad as well. The dad? When does this stuff end? Look man, what's the point in me even going into it? I've already told you enough. Anyway, if all this weird stuff was happening, why did you still date her? Like, what did you like about her in the first place? You know what, Justin? That is a very good question. What did I like about her? I'm not really sure, come to think of it. But hey, she's got some pretty good bonkers, doesn't she? Okay, I'm going to take that as more evidence that your mind is still the mind of a 15-year-old. Hey, well, what can I say? I'm a man of taste. Thank you for the warning. Kyle, I thought that you would be a bit more celebratory of what happened today, but I guess I was wrong. I will be proceeding with my marriage, and I expect you to be there. You'll be my best man. You'll see, I am going to prove that you are wrong. Mackin is a great girl. Hey man, it's your last chance. You better listen to what I have to say. You are going to regret this. Trust me, she is not the one for you. I know the type of guy you are. You don't chase after the crazy and selfish type. That's not who you are. You still have a chance to get out of this. Let me introduce you to some fine ladies. Come on, man. What's your taste? I'll give you Latina. Asian. Anything. Anything but her. Just hit me up, Justin. Hey, babe. Thanks so much for going out of your way to see my dad today. This is so fun, isn't it? Meeting each other's parents and stuff. I wonder what type of guy he is. I'm really excited. I hope he likes me. Oh my god, babe. Come on, don't be worrying about that. I'm sure he's going to absolutely love you. Did you wear the outfits I told you? I sure did. Right down to the right colored shoelace. Okay, good. Because I want you to look perfect. This is your first impression. Remember, the clothes are very important. God, I just wish I was there to be with you. I mean, I really want to see you in the flesh talking with my dad. Whoa, hold on a second, Megan. 
You're not coming today? I thought we planned this to be a lunch date with just the three of us. I know, I know. Don't think I've forgotten. But you know my favorite artist has just come into town. I had like no idea. My girlfriends invited me out and we're all going to get our stuff signed. Your favorite artist? You're talking about that guy with the mullet and has his beard jacked down to his belly button? Yeah, that's the one. The really cool guy. He's so handsome. Gosh, I'm getting so fluttery just thinking about him. So surely you understand that I just absolutely must go see him, right? I mean, this is kind of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. He doesn't come to our town very often. Yeah, I guess that might be true. Then again, he's from this town, isn't he? I'm sure he'd come back quite often. Hey, well, I'm not going to take any chances. We don't know if that's going to happen. Okay, well, Megan, I know it's really exciting that he's come here and whatnot, but don't you think that you should come to this lunch anyway? I mean, it's a very important day. Maybe we should just cancel it and arrange for another day. What are you talking about? No, my dad's going all his way out here to meet you. I don't want to disrespect him like that. All right, fair enough. So, what do you expect us to do then? Well, look, you guys are boys, right? If I'm there, I'm probably going to get in the way. You know how girls are. We just have this tendency to talk about things that you guys aren't interested in. I'll leave you guys alone to have the big manly conversation. Anyway, I've got to go. My girls are here to pick me up. You guys have fun. Play nice, okay? Megan, what are you doing right now? I've been trying to contact you for days. Are you okay? I'm starting to get really worried about you. If you don't get back to me, I'm gonna have to file a missing persons report. I'm gonna be doing it by the end of today. Oh, I just hope you're all right. Oh, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Let's not do anything hasty. Can you just settle down, Justin? I'm gone for a few days and you're going to make that much of a fuss about it. Jeez. Well, hey, I don't know what you expect me to think, Megan. I didn't get any messages from you. You tell me that you're off to see some artist and I don't hear about you this whole time? I'm gonna get worried, right? Hey, come on. You should know a girl like me is able to handle herself. I was doing fine, don't you worry. But what were you doing? Well, you know, I was just hanging out at my friend's house. Your friend's house? Yeah, we had a lot of excitement meeting that guy. And, you know, one thing leads to another. The girls and I decide to go out for a drink. We have a bit of fun, and then we crash at someone's house. It's no big deal. Okay, are you sure that is all that happened? Of course I am. Positive. You have to believe me. Okay, well, you really had me worried, Megan. A message or two would have gone a long way, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Anyway, that's besides the point. You had lunch with my dad, right? How did things go? Isn't he awesome? You two must have gotten along really well. Yeah, look, I'm not sure if awesome is the right word that I would use to describe it. Hey, someone sounds like they're worried. What happened? Tell me about everything. You didn't get on my dad's nerves, did you? Well, look, how can I explain it? The whole experience really weirded me out. I mean, is your dad okay? What is that supposed to mean? I was really surprised about the guy that came up to talk to me. I mean, you said that he had my photo and he knew what I looked like, right? Some guy came up and talked to me, but I had no idea that it was your dad. Well, that would make sense. You haven't seen him before, right? No, I don't mean in that sense. I, I mean in the sense that I wasn't imagining the type of person coming up to me. I mean, was that actually your dad? I'm still doubting it even now. Why? What was this person like? Okay, well, this guy was wearing this checkered hat that was as tall as Willy Wonka's. He was walking around in all torn up clothes. Rips in his pants, and not the good kind either. He didn't even wear shoes, actually. 
just came at me with his socks on. One of them had a hole in it. You could see his big toe popping out of it. Oh, yeah, cool. So you met my dad. Yeah, that's him. Okay, so that is your dad, isn't it? Uh, is he okay? That was the weirdest thing that I have ever seen. I wasn't expecting that to be my father-in-law. Hey, don't shoot the gun too early. We're not married yet. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's my dad. So how did things go? Um, okay. Well, putting his appearance aside, we sat down for a coffee. He asked the waiter to serve him some beer. But she flatly refused and affirmed that we were in a cafe, not a bar. Oh, wow. That's so funny. Typical dad. <laughs> Typical dad? He does this type of thing quite a lot, I'm guessing. Uh, from that point on, I tried to make conversation with him, but it was really awkward. I told him my name and said it was nice to meet him, and he just stared at me without blinking. Pulled out a little canister and took a sip of it. He didn't say anything to me. Oh, he's shy. You must have made him really nervous. Are you serious? I thought that the one that was meant to be nervous was me. I was just sitting there drinking my coffee and watching him. You gotta let me ask, was he drunk that day? What was that? Yeah, was he drinking? Like, what was in that canister of his? I can hardly think that it was some sort of supplement drink to help him with old age or something. I could smell something off of him. It was definitely alcohol. Oh wow, I guess dad was pretty excited, huh? He likes to drink when he's looking forward to things. I'm sorry, what did you just say? Yeah, look, don't take it too personally. I know it's a little bit weird, but it's just one of those things. It's a good sign. He was eager to see you. I don't know if eager is the word that I would use to describe it. I mean, the more he drank, the more hostile he grew towards me. He started asking me a lot of personal questions, wanting to know where I work, what I do, what my hobbies are, how much time I have. Well, these all sound like pretty normal questions. You didn't say anything weird, did you? Not by my standard. He finally got a pretty good picture of the type of guy that I am and what I do. And that's when he started making the demands. He told me that I have a lot of free time on my hands and that I should go over and help him with the house. He doesn't have a wife to take care of him. He needs some help getting things together. Oh, wow. This is really good, isn't it? This is going to be a great time for you to start bonding. That's amazing! Is it really, though? I tried to explain to him that I would come over and spend some time with him when I can. But I have a lot of things to do in my occupation. Not only that, but you know about my side occupation, right? I have to spend a lot of time doing that, too. I'm not sure I have time to come to this house as much as he wants me to. Okay. Well, how much does he want you to come over to his house? Well, get a load of this. He wants me to go there every weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Oh, wow. Every weekend? He must really want to get to know you. You boys gonna have so much fun together! Megan, I'm not exactly sure that this is some type of bonding activity. It sounds like he wants me to actually do work. Apparently, his house is not in the best condition. It's quite old and it's breaking down. He's also got a horrible condition with his lawn. He's telling me that he's way too old to do all of that type of thing on his own. He wants me to do it. Not only that, but when he talks to me, he keeps calling me boy. Isn't that weird? I'm a grown man now. I mean, from his perspective, I might be a boy, but I'm still an adult, aren't I? Hey, like I said, that's just the quirks of my dad. You're gonna have to get used to it at some point. Yeah, well, you're telling me. When I tried to contest with him about it, he'd said that this is the price to get with his daughter. If I wanted an amazing girl like you, I've got to put in the work. Yeah. You know what? I can kind of agree with him on that point. Hey, Megan, uh, you don't think that this is just a little bit too intrusive, don't you? In what way? What do you mean by that? I mean, I get the idea of bonding and getting to know each other, but just, this attitude just seemed a little bit off to me. I didn't get the impression that he really wanted to get along with each other. It just feels like he wants me to do stuff for him. 
Not only that, but I'm really worried about the guy. I mean, he looked horrible. Not just his appearance, but his face as well. He had sleep bags on top of his sleep bags. Eyes that were going bloodshot red. Yeah, look, you're noticing the horrible side of my father, aren't you? The horrible side? What do you mean by that? Well, here's the thing. He hasn't had it very easy. My mom walked out on us at a very early age. I was just about to enter middle school. He took that really harshly. Why did your mom walk out on you? You're telling me that she didn't take you with her? Well, she sure tried to, but at the end of the day, I'm a daddy's girl. I'll always stay by his side. As for why she walked out, well, my dad has his vices. We all do at the end of the day. What type of vices are we talking about? To actually walk out on your husband and ditch your daughter is a pretty big deal, don't you think? It's nothing major, really. She was just making a big deal about something that was so insignificant. Like, okay, sure, my dad likes to drink. I'm sure a lot of people do. And he did gamble a little bit on the side. But is that a good enough reason to walk out on your family? I think she's so horrible for doing that. She should have stuck around and tried to help him. That's true. I guess family should always be there for each other, but I'm not really sure to what extent your father was gambling and drinking. It could have been pretty bad. I mean, it's clear he was drinking something in front of me just the other day. Which, I mean, it wasn't that much. He probably drank a 10-pack every day. I have to be honest, a 10-pack is a considerable amount of alcohol. Hey, look, honestly, it wasn't. He's really good at holding his liquor. I mean, he was still able to drive drinking that much. Are you kidding me right now? There is no way that he'd be able to drive with that amount of alcohol. Well, of course he did. He never had an issue. He managed to take me to and from school even when he drank that amount. I'm sorry, what did you say? He actually drove you to school under the influence? I hope you were okay. Didn't anything happen? Yeah, well, we almost got into a car crash every now and then. But that was just totally the other guy's fault. My dad would never do something to put us in danger. He cares about me too much. I don't know, Megan. He was driving under the influence. I'd reconsider your impression of your father. It's a miracle that you didn't get into a car accident. Well, anyway, he's just the type of guy that people don't understand. All of this stuff really hurts him. Life just keeps dealing him back card after back card. It's really sad to see, to be honest. He's worked in a factory for most of his life. It's really grueling work. Oh, okay, I can imagine. Has he been doing it even in his old age? That type of work really isn't good on the body. It's really hard on the joints. I can imagine he's feeling quite broken down from it. Oh my god, Justin, don't be so silly. He doesn't work there anymore. He hasn't worked there in years. He got fired from that job when he was in his 40s. Wait, what did you say? He hasn't been working this whole time? He got fired from that job around the same time I entered high school. Okay, that's pretty early on in your life. Are you sure things were okay back then? You must have been tight for money. Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> Thankfully, my dad was able to get a lot of child support from my mom. We were in a horrible situation and needed her financial support. Not only that, but we got money from the government as well. They classified me as a child in need of dire care. Whatever support that could be given to me, I had to get it. So we ended up earning a lot of money, even when I was in high school. Okay, wow. I'm guessing if you needed all that support, your dad would have stopped drinking for a period of time, right? No, he still kept drinking. We all have to do what we have to do to get by at the end of the day. <laughs> but now he's in a pickle. I've left home, so he's not getting the financial support that he needs. I'm really worried about him, to be honest. Well, I'm sorry to say, but why doesn't he just go back to his job as a factory hand? Actually, you told me he was fired, right? What did he do? Well, he came to work one day fully wasted. He made a huge mistake in the factory and almost killed someone. I wish people could have a little bit more sympathy for him. The day before, he lost a lot of money through gambling. I just don't understand why people can be so cruel. What? He almost killed someone? 
You're taking his side? I've already asked this, Megan, but I have to ask again. Are you sure your dad is alright? This sounds like a guy who needs a lot of help. Like, a lot. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, don't you see what's going on? He has a very serious alcohol addiction. He needs to get help. He can't let this keep persisting. I mean, it's like you said, he doesn't have a job right now, right? What is he gonna do? He's not gonna have the funds to fund his addiction anymore. I know, I know. I hear where you're coming from. It really is sad, isn't it? He does need a lot of help, which is exactly why you're going to do what he says. What did you just say? That's not what I was talking about. Help is help at the end of the day. Every bit of it counts. I mean, sure, I know that he should go to the programs or whatnot, but it all starts at home. That's the foundation. The moment he's able to get his house in order, I'm sure he's going to go to those programs. You sound very optimistic about this, Megan. I'm not really sure if I should be rewarding him for his addiction. I really think he should just get the help first, and then we start doing something about it. What are you trying to tell me right now? You don't want to help my family? You want to marry me, but you don't want to be a part of my family? That's pretty selfish, Justin! No, look, that's not what I'm talking about. I mean, what I'm saying right now is because I care about your family. I feel so sorry that you had to grow up with this guy. What is that supposed to mean? You're acting like I'm some sort of victim or something. It's not like my dad abused me or anything. Don't talk to me like that! No, Megan, that's not what I meant. You know what I mean. You can't exactly say that this was an ideal situation for a child to grow up in. Well, of course it wasn't. My mom wasn't there. She was selfish and walked out on us. You're starting to, like, really annoy me now, Justin. Didn't you say before that it's important to get to know family? Of course I did. Okay. Well, how about you just go and do that then? My dad asked you to come over this weekend. You got work to do, so get to it. I don't want to hear any complaints about it. If you love me and you want to be with me for the rest of my life, this is only a small price to pay. Jeez, okay. Then I'll do whatever I can to help him then. Good. Oh, by the way, I thought of something amazing. I'm going to come move in there. You're going to do what? You're going to move into my apartment? Yeah. Isn't that cool? We can just like totally pretend that we're a married couple now. We can watch movies late at night, cook dinners together, and snuggle every night before we go to bed. That is pretty awesome, isn't it? I knew you would think the same way, Justin. Well, you know what? How about I just move everything while you're at my dad's house? Are you going to be okay on your own? Maybe I should be there to help you. No, no, I'll be fine. I don't have a lot of things to take with me anyway. Okay, well, what are we looking at here? A bed and a couple of drawers, I'm guessing? Yeah, all of that. I've got my little fish bowl. I've got some plants. I've got my kebab skewer. You've got a kebab skewer? Yeah. Isn't that cool? So you actually have that thing, don't you? Yeah, it's going to make the place look really awesome. You better be excited. <laughs> okay. Well, I look forward to us living together then, Megan. Yeah, this is going to be the first day of the rest of our lives. I'm so excited for it. A beautiful, humble home and a loving and caring husband that gets along with my family. Things couldn't get better than this. Don't forget the kebab skewer. <laughs> Hey, honey, I'm coming home now. I'm sorry it's so late. Your dad wanted me to come around and mow his lawn for him. I didn't get a chance to catch a break. I went straight to work this morning, got everything finished, did a little bit of overtime, and then I was mowing his lawn at nighttime. He's really demanding about it. I don't know what the urgency is. He couldn't just wait until the weekend. Anyway, I'm super puffed out. What have you got arranged for dinner? I'll eat anything at this point. You know, how about we get some Uber Eats? I could do with some curry. Oh my god! 
You are seriously, like, not actually complaining about him, are you? You should be ashamed of yourself, Justin. Yeah, look, I'm just kind of reaching my limit here. I mean, first it started off with just the weekends, and now he wants me to come multiple times during the week? I've got to say, I'm reaching my limit. I've got a lot of responsibilities. I'm not living up to any of them. Well, I guess you're just going to have to try harder, aren't you? You're kind of giving me this really wussy, I can't do anything attitude, and it's not really attractive. Why don't you just step up to the plate and do things properly? What do you mean by do things properly? Well, let's take a look at the state of things, Justin. I mean, I've heard that you're not doing well at work. My dad is getting annoyed with you, and I haven't seen you put one second into doing that little sidekick of yours. Do you even want to earn any money for our family in the first place? Oh, come on, Megan. Don't be ridiculous. Of course I do. I am trying my best here. I'm trying to utilize my time as much as I can. But I've got to say, it's starting to beat the crap out of me. I'll start beating the crap out of you in a minute. What did you say? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm like totally angry at you. You're not getting anything done, and you're not even giving me any attention. You just keep telling me to make the dinner for you. You come home, you eat it, and then you just go straight to bed. What about me? What about my emotions? Do you, like, care about me at all? Oh, come on, sweetie. Don't be ridiculous. You know I care about you. Everything I'm doing right now is for you. Yeah, well, you can do a better job at showing me that you do care. Right now, you're looking very selfish to me, Justin. Are you kidding me? Me looking selfish? Name one thing that I have done for myself. I noticed that you bought yourself that little massage chair. I mean, yeah, just a little bit of a gift. I definitely have the money for it. Can you blame me for getting something like that? The type of things that your dad wants me to do, he's basically got me remodeling his house for him. I'm doing all the painting. I'm sandpapering the walls. I'm mowing the lawn for him. All the work that he's got there never ends. Not only that, but he's not particularly appreciative of it. All the time it's like, do this, do that. Get over here, boy. What do you think you're doing, boy? It is really degrading, to be honest. I don't see what part of this is selfish at all. Well, I don't know. The only way I can look at this is that you're not putting a good job into it. It's clear that you're bringing that stinky attitude to his house and he's not enjoying it. I'm not making you dinner tonight, Justin. I think I need to teach you a lesson. What do you mean, teach me a lesson? Well, this is the only way that I'm going to get you to start putting a decent effort in. You start showing me some vigor and I'll start rewarding you. Okay, fine. I'll just get a little bit of takeaway tonight. I'll go eat out. I'm sorry, Megan. I know all of this is really tough on you. Once we get your dad's house in order, there'll be some more time for us to spend together. In fact, if I can eat this quickly enough, I think I've got time to do a little bit of a hippity-dippity tonight. I'm sorry. What did you just say? Oh, come on. You know what I mean. It's been a while since we've done it, right? How about you get some spare bed sheets ready before I get there? I'll be on cleanup duty this time. Oh my god. You just, like, seriously did not tell me that right now. Do you honestly think I'm in the mood to do something like that? Come on, honey, it's been ages. Oh, I know you miss it too. Yeah. Well, I'm quite capable of doing that stuff by myself, to be honest. I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of enjoying me. You can go sleep on the couch tonight. Are you kidding me right now? I'm actually getting punished for all of this? What the hell is going on? Well, if it means you learn your lesson, then that's the way it's going to be, right? Anyway, you know what's going on. Don't bang the door when you come in tonight. I don't want you waking me up again. Oh, and make sure you give my house a clean. This place is looking like a hoarder's house. Yeah? Well, when you get to that massive kebab skewer in the middle of the sitting room, you kind of give off that impression, don't you? Also, last I checked, this was my house. I'm sorry? What did you just say right now? Nothing. Honey, don't worry. Just ignore what I said. I'm sorry. You get a good sleep. 
I'll be home soon. Hey, yo, Justin! Justin! What's going on, man? I haven't heard from you in weeks. You're meant to be my best friend, right? Check in on me every now and then. Don't leave me in the dark. I want to know what's going on with you. So, how are you and that pig going? Are you enjoying each other's company? Everything working out as amazingly as you thought it would? Oh, hey, Kyle. Uh, sorry about that. I've just had so much on my plate recently. Got a lot of stuff to get done. How have you been, man? Dude, I've been doing fine. The question is, how have you been doing? It's really unlike you to not message me like this. I'm kind of getting worried. Oh, come on, man. We're both adults, aren't we? We get caught up in the things that we have to do. Yeah, but think about it. You announced that you're going to get married, and we have that argument about you and Megan getting married from that point on. You just stopped messaging me. Of course I'm going to think that something's happened. I thought maybe you hated me or something. You kidding me? I'm not going to hate you over something like that. You're just saying all that stuff to help me see who Megan really is. You're my best friend at the end of the day, and you're just doing your job. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're finally seeing reason. So anyway, how is the lovey-dovey couple anyway? She's still calling you a sweetie pie after that little proposal you did in the sky? Yeah, well, um, we're just, uh, you know, just acting like a normal couple, I guess. Acting like a normal couple? What a strange way to describe your relationship. You're acting something? Come on, let me hear it. Something's on your mind. I don't know, uh, there's just a couple of weird things that have popped up recently. Red flags, if you will. Let me ask you one question. Before we get into this, do I get a chance to say, I told you so? You do get the chance, but I'd really like it if you don't rub it in my face. Oh, I am gonna rub it in. I am gonna rub it in big time. Okay, well, out with it. What has the pig done? Well, hey, uh, regardless of what she's done, you don't have the right to call her a pig. You got that? Affirmative. So just tell me already. Well, look, I don't know. Where do I even start? Firstly, that thing with the kebab was real. I didn't actually think that she had one. She brought it to my house. No way. She still has that thing? Even I thought that was going to be some weird high school fad. She's been carrying that thing around for 10 years now? So where did she put it for you? I had to stare at that thing as I was washing myself in the shower. It's just totally out of place. Really unhygienic too. Yeah, well this time we've got it in the sitting room. It's just planted there. You can barely see the TV. Are you kidding me? She's got you to put it between you and the television? I have to say that's probably more bizarre than the shower. She's definitely upgraded her quirkiness. <laughs> You're telling me. I was shocked when I came home to see that thing there spinning. What does she do with all that meat? Well, I get home and I try to eat the most that I can. But the rest she just chucks outside. She leaves it for whatever wants it. Birds, dogs, cats, anything. We've got a whole zoo of animals out there. Just taking what they can. Well, the legend of the kebab stand still continues, doesn't it? That's not all that's been going on, I'm guessing. No, that's not even the main thing. The main thing is that pitiful excuse for a father of hers. Ah, oh, so you met the man himself. I knew that would be a deal breaker for you. So, what do you think? He's got quite the gut on him, doesn't he? That thing's so big he can barely get into his car. <laughs> what car? That man doesn't have a car anymore. He barely owns underwear. She gave me this whole sympathy act of how I have to care about this guy. He's a precious little creature that needs to be protected. She wants me to do everything for him. I'm telling you now, Kyle, I've been breaking my back and bone for this guy. What does he have you up to? Well, you name it. Cleaning, uh, cooking, massages. Cleaning up excrement because he couldn't get to the toilet in time. It's an absolute nightmare. The worst part is that he's got no intention of improving himself. He's got a serious alcohol addiction, and he just lets it persist. 
The man is still in the drink, is he? When I was there, he would drink a 10-pack a day. Yeah, well, that's what I was told from your ex-girlfriend, Megan. I thought a 10-pack a day was not possible, but then I got to know him a little bit more, and he's actually got two packs of those. He is drinking 20. This guy's gonna drop dead in a matter of days. Is this the time I get to tell you I told you so? Well, hey, just let me get to something a little bit more juicier. I'm kind of worried about Megan. She's acting really suspicious lately. What is that supposed to mean? Well, for starters, she's super aggressive with me. She's never talked to me this way before. Not only that, but lately when I come home at night, she's not there. She's supposedly at her friend's house. It's kind of weird. She's awfully close with them recently, almost too close. I can't help but be suspicious about this. Well, look man, it's not too late to duck out of this one. I mean, you're discovering some very new developments here. I don't know if this is the decision you want to make. You're telling me. So what are you going to do about this? Are you going to do the right thing and actually break up with her? No, I am not going to do that. Ugh, come on, man. Don't tell me you're actually going to persist with all of this stuff. What are you hoping for? Well, look, whatever she's up to, I can only speculate. I don't have any hard, solid proof. As for the dad, I'm assuming that once all this work is done, I'll be able to be focused on my marriage. His house is in a horrible condition. I don't know how he sleeps at night. Anytime it rains, that house is in absolute disarray. Okay, so what are you thinking? You just play the long game on this one and just hope that she's not doing something behind your back? Well, actually, I have been thinking about this one a lot lately. You could help me out here, Kyle. Oh, you did not just say that. Oh, come on, we're best friends, aren't we? You know how much I care about this girl. If she's doing the right thing, I don't want to accuse her of it. If a couple of errands here and there are what it takes to be with her, then I'm happy to do that. I'll even tolerate the kebab sitting in the middle of my room. Are you kidding me? Man, is she really worth it? Do you really want to go to this extent just for her? If she is doing the right thing, I sure do. I don't have a lot of time on my hands. I've already got billions of things to do at work, and she's got me doing more. I'm wondering if you can do a little bit of snooping around on Megan for me? Find out what's going on. Come on, man. I don't know, I've got stuff to do. I don't want to be chasing around some girl that I absolutely despise. You get to say it. Say what? I told you so. I told you so. Uh, but hey, that's not enough, man. I'll throw in a little bit of kebab for you. You know what? A kebab is something I could do with. It's been a while. So, when do I get started? Hey, boy! Boy! Boy, what the hell are you doing right now? Don't you ignore me. You've got a job to do. What do you think you're doing going home? What do you mean I have a job to do? Bruce, I've done everything today, haven't I? Your house is painted. I've made you dinner. I've made your meal prep for the week. Everything is done. I've even mowed your lawn. What do you need now? I can't keep coming there at every whim. I am very eager to be a part of your family, but you have to know that I have a limit. Don't tell me you're actually complaining. Are you willing to go the distance for my daughter or not? Let me tell you this, boy. That girl is the only thing that I've got left. There's nothing else in my life. I value her more than anything. I'm not just gonna give it away to you. You have to show me your medal. How much more do you expect me to show you? Bruce, what else could I have possibly done today? I finally got the house over and done with. I thought that this would be the last time that I'm dealing with you. Oh, you must be joking. You actually thought things would just end like that? We're in a lifetime engagement. Boy, you know what marriage means, right? Our families are conjoined forever. Now, I'm an old man with no one to take care of me. I can't put my burdens on my daughter. I have to lay them on you. And what burdens are we talking about right now? Why do you need me to come back there so much? I'm hungry. How could you be hungry? 
I just made you dinner. What? And you think a little bit of dinner is enough to satisfy me? You know what else I need, don't you? What comes after dinner? Sleep, I guess. Is that what you want? You want me to come over there and put you to sleep? Sing you a little bit of a melody to get you in the mood for it? Rub your belly? Ah, get out of here. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about dessert. Dessert always comes after dinner. What do you mean dessert? There's some cake in the fridge. Go eat that. I'm not eating any of that store-bought crap. I want you to come here and make it. You want me to make what? A whole cake? You're out of your mind. That'll take hours. Screw this, I've had enough. I need to give Megan a piece of my mind. I am not putting up with this any longer. Go on then, boy. Let's just see how that pans out for you. Just remember that my daughter loves me to bits. There's not a thing that you can say to turn her against me. Megan! Megan! Megan, what exactly am I looking at right now? Where the hell is all of my stuff? Did we get robbed or something? There's nothing here. What do you mean, all your stuff? All I did was a little bit of a clean-out. All you did was a little bit of a clean-out? What happened to my wardrobe? There's nothing in here. I barely have any clothes. All I've got is the stuff that I wear to work. Yep. And you can thank me later for that one. You've got work to do. I I'm sorry, uh, what do you mean by I've got work to do? Well, you need to get some new clothes, of course. Do you really expect to be walking around in your suits all the time? <laughs> no, I wasn't, to be honest. I was expecting to come home and have some clothes to wear to bed. Just what in the world is going on right now? You didn't actually throw out all of my clothes, did you? Well, no, only the ones that were bad. What do you mean, the ones that were bad? There's nothing in here. Megan, why would you do something like this? Well, look, I've got to be honest. Your style is starting to get a little bit old. My style is getting old? What do you mean by that? I don't know. I'm just not really comfortable walking around with a guy like you. If that's the crap you're going to wear, then I'd rather be dating no one. Okay, so you just throw out all of my clothes without my permission? Why the hell would you do something like that? Well, Justin, what other choice did I have? We're about to get married! Do you really want me to cancel off the marriage because of some clothes? Of course not. What I wanted you to do was accept them for what they were. There's nothing bad about my clothes. You even complimented me on them. Yeah, okay. So maybe for like the first couple of days I thought it was fine. But come on, you've got to spice it up. Get something new. You can't keep wearing the same old thing all the time. I'm going to get bored of it. What do you mean wear the same old thing? I've recently gone up a size. I've had to throw out a lot of my clothes recently anyway. Everything that was in there was brand new. I bought that like two weeks ago. Yeah, and it's two weeks too old. I want you to be wearing something fashionable. You've got to be kidding me. Do you know how much those clothes cost? I must have spent like $3,000 on them in total. Do you realize that you've just thrown out $3,000 of my money? Hey, well, you're a really hard worker, aren't you? I'm sure you're going to be able to get that money back. If you just put your mind to it, I'm sure you're going to get a promotion. $3,000 is going to look like chump change to you at some point. Anyway, I've got to go. I've got a lot of things to do. I've got some plans tonight. The girls are going to look so snazzy. All the boys' eyes are going to be on us. Megan, what the hell? This conversation isn't over. What am I going to do about my clothes? Hey, answer me. Okay, Megan, just when I thought I was reaching my limit, you've managed to find a new way to push me. Why did I just get a call from the realtor saying that we're going to give the house away to your dad? Oh, well, they seem to work really fast, don't they? Yeah, what a good idea is that? I totally, like, got them to work out a deal for my dad to take over. 
Isn't this awesome? Okay, well, explain to me step by step in what way is this awesome. This is my house. I didn't give you permission to do that. Well, you don't need to give me permission. I'm going to be your wife soon, aren't I? I took the initiative. I made a good decision for everyone. Why would this be a good decision for everyone? Well, think about it. I know how much my dad is getting on your nerves. You just hate going over there, don't you? You guys aren't getting along at all. He's had it really hard. He doesn't have a lot of friends and he needs a lot of help. I know you've been doing your best to fix up his house and whatnot, but what a silly idea. Why don't we just give him a place that's already fine? Give him something brand new to start off with. Okay, so you decide to use my house as a replacement? What did you think I was gonna do once your dad takes over this house? Do you actually think we're gonna live together? Of course not. That would be an absolute nightmare. From what my dad tells me, you're really good at getting on his nerves. Apparently, you still have that lazy, uninterested attitude when you're helping him. You've got to be kidding me. You guys are still going on about that, aren't you? Well, hey, Justin, you're going to be marrying into a very good family. You should be a little more grateful. That's grand. That's real grand coming from you. So you're suggesting that we move out or something? Well, yeah, actually. I was thinking maybe you should just move out. Okay, what now? Yeah. I mean, let's face it. The only person that can temper down my dad is me. I want to go move out with you, but he still needs a lot of help. Besides, he's going to be moving into some new surroundings. So I'm sure it's going to take some time for him to adjust. So what do you think, babe? It's a really great decision, isn't it? Don't worry, I know, I know. You don't have to compliment me on how smart I am. Is that what you expect me to do? You actually expect me to compliment you for something like this? Megan, this is the most dim-witted thing I have ever heard. What do you think I've been doing this past couple of months? What do you think I do when I go over to his house? I have been fixing everything up for him. I've pretty much made it a brand new house. It is fully functional. You're telling me that you're going to make him move out of there now? What's the point in doing that? Well, hey, let's take a look at the circumstance. My dad told me that he's having a serious issue with the drinking. He's actually at two packs a day now. Can you believe it? That's so much different from what it was when I was a kid. He really needs a lot of help. I'm sure being close to the family will do him some good. Megan, I didn't say this before because I didn't want to disrespect you, but you're living in a fantasy world right now. I'm sorry? Yeah, a fantasy. You can't do anything for your father. If he wants to get better, it has to come from him. Don't talk about him that way. You guys have to respect each other if we're going to have this marriage. Yeah, well, you know what? Maybe we're not going to have this marriage. What did you just say? Yeah, it is over. Done. I am not putting up with it. You and your dad aren't staying in my house either. What the hell? Why? Why would you do something like this? Wow, do I even need to tell you, Megan? This doesn't make any sense. You told me that you love me. You said that you want to be with me. Everything you do is for me. Why are you doing something like this now? You can't break up with me. You proposed to me. You had it written over the sky how much you wanted to be with me. Yeah, well, that was then and this is now. Honestly, when I put that message up in the sky, I really thought I was doing the right thing. I honestly thought that you were the woman for me. Time goes by and I begin to see your true colors. Everything that Kyle said was... He was right. What did you just say? Kyle? You're not talking about that loser I dated in high school, are you? That loser happens to be my best friend. And I know of everything you did to him. Dating you was absolutely torture. He tried so hard to convince me of the type of person you are. I just didn't want to believe him. The girl that I've liked for this long can't be who he says she is. That was until we found out the truth. What truth? I don't know what you're talking about. I've been nothing but honest with you. You have been anything but honest with me. 
all those nights you've been out with your so-called friends? What have you really been doing? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Come on, you may as well admit it. I've got the proof. I want to hear it come out of your mouth, though. Justin, I've got no idea what you're talking about. You're going crazy! I'm not going to sit here and listen to your crap, Megan. Tell me now if you want any hope of us staying together. You're just such a pain in the butt! You know what? Fine! I've been hanging out with that rock star artist that I really like. There! Are you happy now? Is that the whole story? You're not hiding anything from me, are you? Of course I'm not! We're about to get married! I'm not going to hide anything! Is he just some rock star that you like? Or is he someone a lot more? I'm really confused right now. Come on, Megan. We both know who this guy is. This is one of your exes, isn't it? What the? One of my exes? No, that's so silly. I mean, he definitely has the look I like. That mullet and beard look so good on him. But I will never chase after something like that. You're the only guy I want to be with. Yeah, right, you're not a good liar. Megan, I was trying to think about why you would do what you've done. Why would you secretly see that guy behind my back, but want to marry me? It's because of the money, isn't it? What do you mean? You know, I earn a decent amount in my job. Let's take a look at the picture. You don't have a lot of guy friends that are earning a decent amount of money. Not only that, but you've dated all of them. Everyone got sick of you and broke up early. I only heard your side of the story. You've always made it out that you were a victim or something. Realistically, you always liked the guy with the mullet and the beard. Even though his music is like listening to a baby crying in a ward, that hairdo and beard is absolutely disgusting as well. For some reason, you've been attracted to him. But you knew that staying with a bum like that isn't going to lead you anywhere. You need some sort of financial support. That's when you decide to cling on to me. Oh my god. Justin, that's such a far-fetched story. It's not true at all. Don't think of it that way. Yeah? So what's the real reason? I don't know. I guess. Oh, spare me your lies. I've had enough of you. I've had enough of your cheating on me. I've had enough of you throwing my clothes out. I've had enough of that damn kebab. You and I are done. Come on, Justin. Don't say that to me. There's so much more that we can do together. Don't give up on us now. Please, just give me another chance. I know I can do better. You gotta trust me. Justin? Justin? At least give us the house! I did exactly as she asked and gave her the house, her and her dad. If they wanted to stay there that much, they could have it for all I care. The only thing is that I'll be the one to charge them the rent. I am charging them top dollar for that place. With a dad that can barely work and a woman so emotionally troubled that she can't get herself to work, they had a rough time trying to pay off my rent. Over time, Megan gradually grew more and more fed up with her dad. He wasn't doing anything to pay for the rent. On top of that, he was very demanding of her and acting like he was better than her. It wasn't until one day when the police suddenly turned up at their front doorstep. Apparently, Bruce was involved in some sort of business dealing with illicit substances. It's been the way that he's been paying for all of his alcohol. He got a 10-year sentence in prison. With the amount of alcohol that he's drunk in his life, who knows if he's going to be able to survive there without it. Barely scraping by, Megan only has enough to pay me and feed herself. I intend to keep it that way for a long time. As for me, I secretly had a house that I was prepping for Megan and I. It was going to be our family home once we got married. Unfortunately, things didn't work out the way that I wanted them to. I thanked Kyle for his efforts in finding out what Megan was up to. According to what he told me, she was still involved in doing some really shady things. Apparently, at her age, she still likes to crack out the Ouija board. Kyle gave me a pat on the back for finally making the good decision. His wife is a very socially adept person and has many connections. When he was talking about all those different types of women that he could have introduced me to, he wasn't wrong about all of that. 
I gave him the kebab stand in exchange. He absolutely loves it. Reminds him of that crazy chick Megan. I've got to be honest, it's hard to get over my feelings for Megan. I really did like the girl that I thought she was. I know it's going to take some time, but I'm sure I'm going to find a new person to give my feelings to. This time, I better meet her parents before I propose to her. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you enjoyed it, please remember to click the like button. See you in the next video.